Hi there. Welcome to Direct U.S. Immigration's channel, where you get direct access to our most up-to-date immigration and global mobility space. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm going to talk about a visa that allows companies to transfer a manager, executive, or person with specialized knowledge between their foreign company and their U.S. company. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm a U.S. immigration attorney based in Washington, D.C. I'm also the principal attorney at Direct U.S. Immigration, where we work with clients in all 50 states and around the world. Before we start, click on the like and subscribe button and follow our immigration hub to get the latest immigration information that could be vital to your case. As you know, the American dream has always fascinated and attracted individuals worldwide. Many people dream of working in the United States. But dreams aside, you must qualify to come to the United States and then have the opportunity to come. Now this may sound like a difficult and daunting process, so today we're here to discuss how a visa will allow managers, executives, and specialized knowledge employees who work outside of the U.S. to come and perform services inside the U.S. for a company that either has an affiliation with their current company. Uh, so in terms of that, that could mean uh, an affiliation, a subsidiary, um, or something along those lines. So in this video, we will talk about the L1 visa, which is also known as the intracompany transferee visa. The L1 visa is a popular way to work in the United States. However, just like every visa classification, not everyone who applies gets approved. With the denial rates rising each year, it pays to be informed. So what's an L1 visa? So the L1 visa is the most commonly used visas by companies who wish to either transfer employees and insert their new knowledge into their overseas entity, or for foreign companies who wish to open up a new company in the United States. The employee that is transferred must work in the U.S. company as either a manager, executive, or person with specialized knowledge. If the employee works as a manager or an executive, the subcategory classification is an L1A visa. If the employee works as a person with specialized knowledge, then the subclassification category is an L1B visa. Now, it's important to note that the L1 visa is not eligible for self-petition, so the U.S. or foreign company must file that petition on behalf of the employee. So as aforementioned, there are two subcategories of the L1 visa, and they are the L1A visa and then the L1B visa. So the L1A visa is reserved for managers and executives. The maximum visa validity period for that visa is seven years. After the visa expires, the individual must exit the U.S. and then can re-qualify for the L1 visa after working overseas for a minimum period of one continuous year for that either that subsidiary, parent, branch, or affiliate of that company. Now for the L1B visa, that is reserved for workers who have specialized knowledge. The maximum visa validity period for that visa is five years. And then of course, same thing applies. After that visa expires, the individual must exit the US and then can re-enter, re-qualify for that L1 visa after working overseas for a minimum period of one continuous year. Of course, for the subsidiary, branch, parent, or affiliate. Now, the only caveat to exiting the U.S. is if the employee changes his or her status to a different visa that allows the employee to stay longer in the U.S., which we'll discuss in a later video. Now, there are two types of procedures for applying for the L-1 visa. The first is the regular process, the regular procedure um, that requires the sponsoring company to file an L-1 visa application on behalf of that, of that employee um, for which USCIS will review the credentials of the company as well as the individual to ensure that they both qualify for that visa. Another way is through the blanket L1 visa approval. Now the blanket L petition allows typically larger multinational companies to receive approval to transfer employees quickly and on short notice. However, we do still need to provide necessary documents to show that that specific foreign worker is in fact eligible for the position. 
So in a way, it is a pre-approval pre where USAIS would have already decided that the company's eligibility is in fact there. Hence, the applicant will only have to provide a copy of the blanket petition that has been approved along with the necessary documentations uh, to basically indicate that that specific individual does qualify for the visa. Now, there are also a number of basic requirements for the L1 visa, a couple that we'll go through. The first is that the U.S. company uh, petitioning for that visa must have a qualifying relationship with the foreign entity. And that could be a relationship of uh, branch, subsidiary, affiliate, parent, etc. The second thing to note is that for the entire time that that uh, prospective L1 visa holder is in the United States, the company that is sponsoring that individual must be engaged in business as an employer in the United States, as well as have at least at minimum one foreign entity in another country. Now let's break down the type of requirements for the employee. So for the L1A employee, First, the employer should have worked overseas for that company for at minimum a period of one continuous year within the previous three years before his or her admission into the United States. The second is that the employee must have been in a managerial or executive position to qualify. Third is that the employee must be going to the States to provide his or her services in a managerial or executive capacity of uh, the qualifying organization, so such as the branch, uh, affiliate, parent, subsidiary of the employer. And then lastly, that holder, that visa holder, must have intentions to depart the country after completing the amount of stay um, that is required in the U.S. Now for the L-1B visa holder, there are things that overlap with the L-1A visa, but things that are, that are a little bit different. So similar to the L-1A, the employee does have to work for you know, that, com that subsidiary, parent, affiliate company uh, for one continuous year within the past three years before his or her admission into the United States. Now, the difference is that for the L-1B visa, this employee will have to work with the company to provide specialized services to the qualifying organization and therefore hold specialized knowledge. And what is specialized knowledge? It's very different for each company. It really just depends, and you would have to speak with your immigration attorney to kind of assist you with understanding your unique circumstances. Now, of course, with the L-1B visa, similar to the L-1A, that visa holder must also intend to leave the country after completion of work. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is how do you apply for an L-1 visa? So here's a simplified breakdown of the process in getting an L-1 visa. Step one is that you need to hire an immigration attorney. Uh, this is such an important step because the L-1 visa is an extremely complex visa category that requires experience, careful preparation, and strategy. An immigration lawyer like me or another will walk you through the process step by step conduct an in-depth consultation with you, and provide you with a detailed list of the documents they need in order to prepare your L-1 petition. So step two is document gathering. So at this stage, you and the company will gather all the necessary documentation identified by your immigration lawyer, including a detailed description of your proposed job with the U.S. company, evidence of your employment with a foreign entity, and then of course other pertinent evidence that is specific to your case. Now step three is to file Form I-129 and the L supplement. Form I-129 is a petition for a non-immigrant worker, and this is the form that the immigration lawyer will file in order to qualify you for that L-1 visa. Your immigration lawyer will also file the L supplement along with that I-129. Now, it's important to note that, again, this L-1 visa cannot be filed through self-petition. Your U.S. employer is the petitioner, and you, the prospective L-1 recipient, are the beneficiary. All of the supporting documents, such as evidence of employment with the foreign entity, your resume or cover letter, uh, will also be included with that form. And once that form is approved, you are eligible to apply for that L-1 visa at an embassy or consulate abroad. 
Now, if you're doing a change of status inside of the U.S., then once that I-129 is approved, then you've switched over to L1 uh, status automatically and you can begin working. Now, let's take it back just a little bit for step four. So for step four, if you're not doing change of status, so you're not inside of the U.S., uh, then you will likely be applying for that L1 visa at a consulate or an embassy in your home country. So upon approval of that form I-129, you are eligible to apply for the L1 visa at the embassy or at the consulate, and your immigration attorney will assist you with scheduling an interview at the consulate and preparing the necessary documents for you. Now let's talk about those specific documents that you're generally going to need in order to get this type of visa. First and foremost, of course, you need a passport. Um, you'll also need a passport size photograph, form DS-160, the interview appointment letter, the I-797 approval notice for that form I-129, um, fee payment confirmation, work experience letters, certificate of training undertaken or degrees, so your diploma, your transcripts, um, also your resume, your pay stubs, uh, and then of course information regarding the U.S. company, um, such as what you'll be doing there, as well as potentially photographs of the pace, place of employment. So to kind of bring everything together and conclude this video, we all know that the L-1 visa is a powerful tool for intra-company transferees from a foreign entity into a U.S. entity, into a U.S. company. Now, with that L-1 visa, you can live and work in the United States for that extended period of time. So typically five years or seven years, depending on the subclassification. Now, please note that the L-1 visa is a highly complex visa. In recent years, USCIS has become much stricter and more critical over the L-1 petitions based on widespread abuse. So consequently, a lot of highly technical and detailed information is required in order to get this case approved. So if you have any questions or need help filling out your L-1 petition, email us directly at inquiry at directusimmigration.com. I am a U.S. immigration lawyer and would be happy to help. So as always, I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe if this content or information helps you in any way. Comment below if you want me to talk about something in specific and then share this video as a resource because you never know who needs answers to these questions. I'll see you in the next video.